Karl Marx, 1818 to 1883, German philosopher and father of communism. In order to understand the philosopher, it's useful to know a little bit about the time in which the philosopher lived. Karl Marx lived in mid to late 1800s Europe, which was a time of a lot of chaos, protest, workers not paid a lot, working too long, other workers unemployed, no welfare state, no right to vote. Revolution spread throughout Europe during this time period. Karl Marx had an insight, a reason he felt that all of this unrest was occurring. He felt it was all about money. All of this fighting ultimately was about money in the economic system. Some people have money, these fat cats, the big businessmen, these capitalists, sometimes they're called bourgeoisie, the monopoly man symbolizing the capitalist, the rich. They have money. And other people don't have money. These are our workers. These are the proletariat is the name given to them. If you look on the right, the cartoon of the workers going into the factory of Megacore, Abandon all rights, ye who enter here. The capitalists, known as bourgeoisie, and the workers, known as the proletariat, have to come together in the process of business. Whether it's producing a good or uh, doing some sort of service, the boss and workers are engaged in a bit of a struggle while they are trying to accomplish the same thing. This struggle allows them to not always get along so well. Why do they not get along so well? Well, they want two different things. Capitalists want the maximum amount of profit at the lowest, lowest cost possible. An example recently would be a store like Walmart, which has decided that if they could lower their costs, which are workers at the checkout lines, they could increase their profit. So in order to increase the profit, the capitalists, the bosses, lay off the workers and ultimately achieve more profit. The workers at the same time, they want to get paid the most amount of money while working the least amount of time. Even if you love your job, nobody really wants to work for free. And one of the big things about the concept of TGIF, thank God it's Friday, is thanks, thank God I don't have to work. Most workers don't enjoy working unless they're being compensated with a wage. The means of production is an important concept in communism. The means of production are the tools, the machines, and the materials that are needed to produce goods. So this is your factories. This is the um, plants that are producing all of the cars or the products. These factories are owned by the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie meaning the owners. If you look in the bottom left, keep calm and seize the means of production. The little insignia at the top was the communist symbol uh, of Soviet Russia. The idea to seize the means of production. Whoever controls the factories controls the goods and they will ultimately control the economy. Right now in, in a capitalist society, th the means of production is owned by the bourgeoisie. Marx said all of history, if you actually look back, you see that there is a constant clash between these two groups, between the haves and the have-nots, the workers and the bosses, the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. Marx had a theory known as historical materialism. As he said, the whole history of mankind has been a history of class struggles contest between the exploited and the exploiting, the ruling and the oppressed. The exploited and the exploiting. The exploited would be the boss who has his workers work many hours making very little so that they can produce a lot which is then sold at a profit so that the exploiting boss can make more money. This history of class struggle, he said, would eventually come to an end with the birth of communism. Capitalists even compete with each other. The successful capitalists are going to get richer and richer. They build a better mousetrap. And in doing so, the failed capitalists are going to be put out of business and fall into the working class. 
A few years ago, I enjoyed movies so much, I had both a Netflix and a Blockbuster membership. Only one of those exists today. That is the nature of capitalism. Survival of the fittest. One business will rise up, another business will go bankrupt. And every time a capitalist takes a chance to become rich by owning a business, if that business fails, he goes right back to the end of the line at, with the working class. The workers, meanwhile, are more and more exploited by the capitalists who are left, and these workers get poorer and poorer. You don't hate Mondays, you hate capitalism. The concept of TJF, as mentioned earlier, is the concept of work being a place that people don't want to be at, oftentimes. This car cartoon illustrates from left to right the idea of the big fish. There's no justice in the world, says the tiny fish, the worker, and they are gobbled up by the mid-level fish, who says there is some justice in the world. Meanwhile, the big fish, the world is just. A few perhaps get all in a true capitalist society, while the masses are left with very little justice. The trouble for capitalism, according to Marx, is that by creating the proletariat, that's the workers, they have already forged the weapons that bring death to itself. This is a famous quote. Now what does it mean? That's a picture of Karl Marx breaking out of the chains. But Karl Marx, in other words, says, angry poor workers, which are made by this capitalist system, will eventually get so angry with the capitalist system that they will kill the capitalist system. So, taken another way, in a capitalist system, bosses own the means of production, they make the profit, they take the risks, the workers work for a wage. These workers oftentimes are not successful and they become angry and poor if they lose their job. The view of Marx is, just like in a Monopoly game, everybody starts in the beginning with equal amount of money, but at the end, after many landings on Park Place and Boardwalk, one person's got all the money, and the other people are throwing the thimble off the wall. He said, ultimately, the bourgeoisie, that's the lowest class, the poor people, they will destroy capitalism. They've been made by capitalism. As was said by another person, when the poor have nothing left to eat, they will eat the rich, meaning revolution or rebellion. According to Marx, the days of capitalism are numbered because there's going to be more and more money for fewer and fewer people. On the bottom right, you see the book that he authored with Frederick Inkles, The Communist Manifesto, which is the uh, description of com his communist theories. The concept of monopoly is, is sort of crucial to uh, Marx's view. As Marx says, eventually there'd be so many people without money that they would overthrow the system and replace it with a system in which money is insignificant. The monopoly game itself symbolizes capitalism. The monopoly man is J.P. Morgan, who had so much money that the U.S. government asked him for a loan. J.P. Morgan at the end of the monopoly game is the last man standing. Marx said the people would be so upset that there were so many people with nothing that they would overthrow the system. This new system that will come about after the revolution would be communism. When capitalism fails, Mad Marx, the warrior of the working class. I dedicate this slide to Ryan DiMartino. Marx said that eventually the workers will rise up in a revolution against this capitalist class, and this revolution will result in a classless society being created, meaning no more rich and poor, or bourgeoisie and proletariat, but everybody being the same, classless. This was promised in communism, but in actual communism as it existed, historically, this never occurred. So what we have, generally speaking, is one big fish that is eating all the little fish. The big fish representing big business, and all the little fish are basically getting gobbled up, and then one day, if the little fish realize there's a lot of them, they could, if they wanted, overturn the system. Bernie Sanders, who ran for president two different times as a democratic socialist, talked about a, uh, a revolution, but not a violent revolution, a, rev a revolution at the polls, 
whereby if people voted for something, if all of the little fish realized they were oppressed and exploited, they could have a revolution at the ballot box. The Communist Manifesto, when he wrote this, the theory of the communists may be summed up in a single sentence, abolition of private property. Well, not many people in America want to give up their stuff. In fact, our whole lives are really based around stuff. We go to school to get into college to get a job so we can have lots of stuff that we have to go to our jobs to pay for. The idea that Marx introduced that if we simply didn't have private property, if we couldn't have our own stuff, we would not have to spend our lives working jobs which were not productive for us emotionally, psychologically, and ultimately without private property we wouldn't have warfare. We would all share together. This concept might be slightly more utopian than most people would uh, most people would agree with. However, the few times uh, that communism has actually ever occurred in both China under Mao Zedong and in the Soviet Union Russia under Lenin and Stalin, the Communist Party ended up becoming a privileged class above from the people below them. A true communist society is classless, meaning there is no rich and poor. But the only times that communism actually has come to power in the world it was not classless, rather you had the government who were above the people. So the relationship between a boss and a worker is an exploitive one in the view of the worker. The worker has to do what the boss tells them. Everything is for the benefit of the boss. We'll call the boss the ruling class. Nothing is for the benefit of the worker, the subject class. That's why workers, the subject class, oftentimes will try to unionize or organize themselves against the ruling class. This is a miserable relationship between these two classes, and it's going to lead to exploitation and alienation. Alienation meaning the disgust over time that will build up on the workers whose hard work only results in a small wage while the bosses become rich. In a capitalist class structure, the workers oftentimes feel stuck and tied to their jobs because they're so tied to their possessions and they feel they just live to make money to pay for their possessions. Karl Marx in a famous controversial quote said, Religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world, and the soul of soulless conditions. It's the opium of the people. What Karl Marx felt is that opium, which is a drug that dulls the pain, he felt religion would do the same thing for people. In other words, their lives would be so miserable in, in a capitalist society that they would turn to the church as a way to lighten their moods, which obviously is beneficial, unless you're Karl Marx, who wants the people to feel displeasure from the working conditions so that they will rise up and overthrow the mean capitalist pig dog owner. To him, religion was an opium. It calmed their pain, and in that in that way, he it did not. It stood in between him and the revolution he hoped for. Marx argued that there was serious class conflict in capitalist societies because of this exploitation. The subject class were suffering from false class consciousness. This is an important important concept. This means that they were just not aware of how much they were being exploited as workers and consumers. This false class consciousness is the brainwashing. The concept of turning a want into a need by a business so that the worker works extra hours to make more money to pay for the need, which is really not a need at all but a want, and when they pay the money to the business, that money goes back to the same exploiters who are the employers. This rat wheel existence causes false class consciousness. People don't realize how badly they're being screwed over. The concept of media and advertising forces an ideology. An ideology is a series of ideas. The brainwashing of materialism that's come across in our society forces us always to keep buying goods and in the capitalist society this is beneficial in the communist society this is the further brainwashing of the workers to stay on the rat wheel to run after the cheese which they really don't need Karl Marx quote the oppressed are allowed once every few years 
to decide which particular representatives of the oppressing class are to represent and repress them. Concept, he's saying, is voting is corrupt. Every few years, whoever the representatives will still oppress them. The concept being that true politics, in Marx's view, doesn't represent the poor, that the poor need to overthrow and seize the means of production. So in a nutshell, what are the most important concepts about Karl Marx? Well, he obviously uh, illustrates pretty effectively the class struggle. He talks about two classes, rich and poor. We could call them workers and bosses, bourgeoisie and proletariat. But there is, I think everybody would agree, a conflict between the haves and the have-nots. Marx said at some point he predicted that the have-nots would rise up. They would organize themselves. They'd realize that there's more of them and that they were being exploited. And they would seize the means of production. Marx said, and here's an important concept, this would only happen when they become class conscious, meaning when they realize how much they're being taken advantage of and exploited. Only at that point when they realize that they're the sucker will they eventually rise up and organize themselves. And Marx claimed that they would organize themselves into a classless society where everybody's equal without private property. This sounds great, but it hasn't happened. As we've talked about the times where communism quote-unquote existed, it was not classless. It was a large group of poor supported by a rich government elite. That's not true communism in the Karl Marx Das Kapital set. And we'll finish off the PowerPoint with this slide, which I think pretty accurately reflects most Westerners' view of communism. Cool pen, can I have it? No. This is why communism won't work. We are definitely tied to our stuff. It is interesting in the cartoon in the top, they say why communism and in smaller letters they talk about socialism. Socialism is not complete government ownership. It is not complete private ownership, but rather it's a mix. Some people have mixed socialism with communism, but we'll talk about that in a future class. Please take the time to write journals. I hope you got something out of the discussion of Karl Marx and socialism. Next class, we will talk about Adam Smith and capitalism.